All right, Faye Sensei, thanks so much for your time. Yes, of course. Uh, tell us about your own uh, combat background. Man, oh, I started karate when I was four. My dad runs a martial arts school. I do that full time now. I run my own martial arts school with my dad. Um, but, you know, a little sparring with karate growing up as a kid. But did MMA as an, as an amateur. Uh, a couple fights, a couple of kickboxing amateur fights. Um, then a pro kickboxing fight. And then influencer boxing. Thanks, Mixed in there. A lot of stuff. Sounds good. Now, influencer boxing's taken off very quickly. Yes. For me, I'm, I'm 32 now. I'm all from a background where I've been watching. Almost. I'm 31. Yeah. I'm oh, are you? Nice one. I've been watching boxing for a long time. Okay. But all this influence has taken off very quickly. What can you tell us about it? It's because these influencers have their own fan base, right? In traditional boxing, in order to develop a fan base, you have to be like a killer. Or Mike Tyson, a guy that everybody fears, right? Or you have yeah. to have this amazing record. But with the influencers... Everyone wants to see them anyway. So when they have to take the risk, because boxing is so dangerous, right? It's real. Of course. You can't play boxing. So when you have these guys who, and girls who don't need to do this, right? Winderson, celebrity, yeah. movie star, right? Comedian. Kevin Hart of, of Brazil. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Does not need to be here whatsoever. No. Now he's this risk that he's taking, right? This huge risk. For what reason? Just for the love of, love of fighting or to challenge himself? So when, you, when you're a fan of somebody and then you see them take this kind of risk, it's just like, of course you're going to... If you pay for them to watch a, a comedy show or to, let's say you watch their streams or the YouTube video, of course you're going to watch them box. You know what I mean? Of course. So it's just kind of a no-brainer. No, it's, a good, it's definitely a good point. Regarding the recent Jake Paul Tommy Fury fight, yeah. do you think that was a bad fight for Jake Paul to take? Because the, way, uh, the quickest way I can explain it, it's like, if you, say you're trying to learn a language. So you can, yeah. go, you can go to, um, so you're from America. So say you go to Harvard or Princeton. Yeah to learn whatever language, it's still going to, even if you get a degree, it's going to be difficult to take on someone that was born yeah. in that country, he's been doing it for a long time. So with Jake Paul, I, you know, it was, it was definitely, do you think it was a bad fight to take against no, someone? So, a bad fight to take yeah. because so much about Jake in the, is his choice of opponent yeah. has been so negative as of late, right? Yeah. It was just like, it's not a boxer, not a boxer, not a boxer. So even though he was getting knockouts and highlights and getting wins, it was like people were getting a little run down. Right, and he's somebody. He's no joke. He he wants to challenge himself. If you actually look at, like we, we look, it's like hindsight's twenty twenty. Of course, we see the Ben Askren thing, but then after he knocks him out, then we realize how one sided it was. But when it was happening, we're like, we don't know because Ben Askren is a UFC guy. Same thing with Woodley. It's like it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a fifty fifty fight going into it. When he obviously won and knocked him out, we think back, it wasn't a close fight. Right? Yeah, or they weren't matched up well. But that's a big challenge. Nobody else in the scene is fighting Tyron Woodley, even now after he gets knocked out, right? So I think the progression has been right for Jake. Um, and it was, a, it was a tough challenge. I think it, it also paints Jake in a different light because we realized he, he took on a, a boxer who's challenging, right? He's taken a loss now. Um, and if he can come back and still get a good pay-per-view, now he's fighting Nate Diaz. He's shown that you don't have to win them all, right, to keep this influencer boxing going. Of course, of course. So I think it's good for his story. And the last two questions, what fights would you most like to see in influencer boxing? Ooh. So Poppy KSI. Yeah. Um, hmm. What other ones? I mean, obviously the big one will be Jake Paul versus oh, okay. KSI. Obviously, yeah, it's like so obvious. Obvious. Like Jake and KSI. Um, the so Poppy fight. Le'Veon so, and yeah. um, yeah. Logan. Last Log question, uh, quick. Yeah, like, and this like, over leaving with Wade. We can do walking. Yeah, so yeah. last question. For me, I've actually, as I've had a few fights, uh, I've actually sparred okay. a few pros before. I've sparred Kel Book. Oh, on, awesome. On camera. My man's a killer right here. We gotta I, watch out, buddy. I lasted less than two minutes. So, yeah. last question. I would love to spar you at some point. How can we make that happen? Do I get man. in touch with my social media? You gotta do that because I, I rarely spar in general. Yeah. Um, so, it had to be at the right time, right moment. I, sometimes when I spar in the States, if I have a fight coming up, yeah. I keep it super playful. I don't spar a lot. I try to protect my brain as much as possible. Oh, fair enough. Um, so... Where are you from? Over here? I live in London, yeah. You live in London? Well, you never know, because I may have set up a spar with KSI again, or maybe I'm here training with a lot of London a lot of London fighters. So if I end up sparring, I may have to say, you know, I'll let you know that I'm in the area. Cool. We can make it happen. I appreciate your time, man. Right yeah, time, course. right place. We'll see if it happens. Yes. Thanks so much, bro.